And now it is my pleasure to welcome His Excellency Mr. Jose Ulises de Pina Correa Silva, Prime Minister of Cabo Verde. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Madam President, Excellencies, I warmly greet Dr. Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber, President of the COP28, and I wish him every success. Cabo Verde. Cabo Verde believes in the scientific evidence and it has the firm conviction that it is still possible to prevent the planet from warming, warming to protect it and to ensure that the temperature does not rise by more than 1.5 degrees by the end of this century. But all of this is going to require great determination. And so it is a political obligation for all countries, for all leaders to make a, a top priority out of jointly implementing the solutions and the commitments that we have signed up to. And here, time is the critical factor because nature continues on its course, reacting to the conditions that human beings create with their actions and their omissions. Cabo Verde is one of the small island developing states. It's located in an arid region of the Sahel. It has very fragile ecosystems, and it is therefore one of the countries most exposed to the risks and the consequences of extreme weather events. As a small island developing state, we uh, encourage there to be a clear and urgent defi definition of the financing mechanism for loss and damage. We reaffirm also the urgent need to adopt the multidimensional vulnerability index as part of the climate finance criteria for the SIDS. We endorse the declarations of EOSIS and the African Negotiators Group. For Cabo Verde, the climate agenda is one of our top priorities. And for our country, reducing dependence on fossil fuels and increasing our energy efficiency is an economic, environmental, climate and social imperative because it has an impact on the balance of payments and on reducing the economic and financial risks in the face of external shocks, reducing carbon emissions and reducing also the energy bills for our companies and our households. We can achieve our objectives and targets for climate action by taking the following actions. First, define and implement integrated long-term strategies and policies. We need a robust legal and institutional framework for climate governance. We need climate finance and transparency mechanisms that involve the public sector, the private sector, and also development partnerships. And we need to improve climate literacy and engage our local communities, with public and private investments in the energy transition, energy efficiency, water efficiency, and the blue economy, we can create opportunities for uh, professional skills, for decent jobs, and for entrepreneurship among our young people. And these are the kind of virtuous effects that we seek, combining a reduction of emissions with an increase in resilience sustainability and the creation of economic opportunities. Together with Portugal, we have signed an agreement on the transformation of bilateral debt into climate finance. We have shown that if there is political will and if there is trust between the parties, we can move forward with uh, structured solutions. Transforming debt into climate, climate finance frees up resources for investment. And this has a virtuous impact for sustainable development and for resilience. Now, let me conclude by hoping that this COP28 
will produce significant progress in the commitments and in strengthening the capacity to respond to urgent global climate challenges. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency.